Good morning. Muskrat Jim here. Outside in the rain, and uh, the mosquitoes are biting. It's um, about 10 o'clock in the morning, and last night we had quite a bit of thunder showers. I came out yesterday, put up this tarp, and got a bit of a fire pit set up here um, in preparation for today. But um, anyway, it looks pretty darn wet right now. Let me just uh, move the camera down to the fire pit here just to give you an idea. So as you can see, the wood that I put there is really quite wet. Um, I'm not sure I can get that started this morning. Anyway, I brought a, a hobo stove with me, so we'll be using we'll be using that. And we'll see if we can make some coffee or tea or something. Anyway, this is my second video in the uh, Muskrat Survival Series. And uh, anyway, since I haven't been on YouTube for a very long time, I haven't been tagged for for anything like uh, meet the bushcrafters or whatever. Um, so I figured I would just uh, tell you my story, even though I haven't been tagged. Anyway, um, when I was a kid, I read stories like um, Harley Mowat's Lost in the Barrens and uh, Jack London's um, Two Against the North. No, wait a second. It's not Two Against the North. Two Against the North and Lost in the Barrens are both the name of Farley Mowat's book. Jack London's book was called To Build a Fire. Anyway, I used to read that kind of stuff, and and my dad was um, a member of the infantry here in Canada, and uh, they they called uh, Princess Pat Canadian Light Infantry, Princess Patricia. Anyway, um, they learned a bunch of survival techniques there, and uh, and anyway, my dad used to read a bunch of books on survival and, and stuff, and uh, he also used to um, remind me all the time of my Native American heritage. Um, my mother's mother's mother was uh, Native American, and uh, anyway, he used to, he used to be really, I don't know, involved, I guess, with the uh, Native Americans. Anyway, so he taught me a, a little bit of stuff there as well. Um, just gonna grab some twigs. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, what else can I tell you? Childhood. Okay, and then as I grew up, I uh, enjoyed spending time in the woods. And, um, And anyway, uh, when I became an adult, I joined the search and rescue, and also I became a Cub Scout leader. And uh, anyway, so again, spending time outdoors and, and whatnot. Um, so, and let's see now. Um, the other thing you'll probably notice from my video, I'm just going to grab my lighter out of my EDC here. Now, let's see if we can get this started.
started this fire with um, some Vaseline uh, coated makeup pads. They're like cotton balls, but they're quilted. And uh, some birch bark. But I don't know that it's going to take because everything is so soaking wet out here. I'm just going to uh, bring the camera back up to my face. Um, like I said, um, I've been involved with search and rescue here in New Brunswick and uh, also with the Cub Scouts. Um, and that was back 10 or 15 years ago. And I spent the last 10 or 15 years working on my career. My career, what I do for a living is um, I'm an IT manager at a community college here. And um, anyway, I spent the last 15, 10 or 15 years um, learning that. And I really haven't gone back into the woods during that period of time. So uh, with everything happening like uh, Hurricane Katrina and the ice storm in Quebec back in 98 and um, the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of natural disasters that are happening right now. Um, and a lot of governments just can't, they just can't deal with it. Um, but it took a long time for the US government to even deal with Katrina. And uh, Louisiana, the, those dikes, not the dikes, the, uh, I can't remember what they're called now. But anyway, um, it took a long time for the people, for the governments to respond to the needs of the people. And that's just natural disasters. Then you have things like unnatural disasters, man-made disasters, like the, uh, oh, smoke's hitting my lungs. Um, man-made disasters, like the, uh, the financial crisis that's going on now, mostly in Europe, but uh, anyway, it's coming. It's it's having an effect here because of uh, globalization and uh, just the global economy. And Greece, well, it looks like it may go bankrupt. And uh, anyway, the people basically will be left on their own. So it's important for people to learn um, self-reliance, outdoor skills. That sort of thing. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm getting back to nature after, you know, 15 years. Um, okay, I think I might be able to get caught on there with some water. Okay, get some water in there. See if we can get a bit of a boil. So anyway, self-reliance is important, especially today. Um, like I said, because there seems to be so many things happening on the world stage that People are just going to have to rely on on what they can do. Should put the lid on that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So anyway, for the camera, what I've got is a 
I've got an umbrella taped to the tripod to try to keep it dry. Um, so hopefully that'll work for me. Another thing about me um, that may not be visible immediately is that I have uh, a physical handicap. Um, I only have one arm below the elbow, or I'm missing an arm below the elbow. This is an artificial arm. Um, in, in a survival situation, what you're doing is you're making, making the best out of, out of a situation. And I feel that my handicap is just one of those other things, you know, where I try to make the best out of a not perfect situation. Um, there's another bushcrafter. His name is Mr. One-Legged Josh. And I've watched a couple of his videos. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he's doing what he can do as well. Hopping around on crutches and building lean-tos and surviving in the wild. Um, so I commend him for that. And uh, basically it's just one other, just one other thing that you have to deal with in the bush, you know? Not having everything perfect or whatnot. Um, so anyway, in some of my future videos, you'll probably see me not wearing this. Um, because it, it's really, it's really just there for show. It keeps my sleeve from blowing in the wind. Um, I was born this way, so I really don't let it, um, I really don't, uh, I'm starting to choke on the smoke. I really don't let it prevent me from doing things. Um, but anyway, for most of the time, like if I'm at work or out in public or whatever, I'll tend to wear it. Um, just so then, you know, kids don't get freaked out or something. But anyway, uh, when I, as soon as I get home from work, after I take off my shoes, the very next thing I take off, well, if I'm wearing a coat, I take off my coat. Take off my shoes and take off my coat, and then the very next thing to come off is, um, is the arm. And so I just basically go around the house doing my things um, with one hand and the stump. And you'll see in some of the videos that will be coming up um, that I'll be camping without it. Um, because it's, it doesn't add anything to a survival situation. It's just, I don't know, uh, two or three pounds worth of worth of junk that I carry around with me. Um, so anyway, we want to travel light and uh, that helps in a, in a survival situation because then you're not working as hard. The past month or so, I discovered the bushcraft community, I guess it is, on YouTube and um, I put up my own channel a couple of weeks ago. And um, anyway, so uh, I'm starting to add videos. This is my second video. Um, one of the guys that I really like is from Georgia, and uh, his name is Really Big Monkey Number One, or Really Big Monkey One. And I'll put a link down here so you can click on his uh, his page. And also, I'll, I'll put the link for. Um, a couple other guys that I really, uh, I really admire, like Ghost Camel and uh, that uh, Wilderness 333. He's got some pretty good ideas. Just gonna check my fire, my pot. The water's warm, but it's not boiling. I think my fire may have gone out. Yep, she's just smoldering in there right now. Oh yeah, that's hot enough. You know, we'll just let that steep for a little bit. And I'll have a nice hot drink. Well, not hot, 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 but warm nonetheless. So, mosquitoes. Um, 
I just wanted to have a call out to um, really big monkey one and tell him that I haven't tried Nick's favorite tea yet and we don't have honeysuckles here but um, I'm sure that it would taste great. Um, I'm going to try some pine tea there one of these days. Um, hopefully hopefully it won't rain too much around here because the mosquitoes get really bad when it rains. Um, but I know down in Georgia it's really, really dry and has been for a while. Um, so anyway, I'm just uh, wishing that you get some of our rain. Anyway, so this is uh, Muskrat Jim signing off and hoping that none of your trails are swampy. <laughs>